Hey everyone, welcome to Password State Tutorials. In this video, I'll talk a little bit about what password lists are, and then I'll show you how to create one. Password lists are simply a logical collection of passwords. For example, if you have a number of different website logins, you could create a single password list to store all of these in. If you choose, you can then share out that password list with other colleagues, and it then becomes a central location for everyone to work with those passwords. There are two types of password lists that you can create, shared or private. One or more users can access shared password lists, and you can add or remove access for users at any time. But if you only intended on storing personal passwords, such as your own Facebook login or a credit card PIN number, then you would use a private list. Private lists are designed, so not even your IT security administrator can access them. To create a password list, choose the appropriate option from the Passwords menu. or alternatively, right-click a password's home or a folder and choose your option from there. Now the first thing to do is give your password list a name, a description and assign an image to it which makes it easily identifiable in your navigation tree. If you would like to assign a custom strength password policy which controls the strength of the passwords that can be added into this list, Set the appropriate one from this drop down menu. On the next menu down, you can also set a custom password generator, which is used when you're quickly generating a random password. We'll discuss these features more in depth in a separate video. Normally, you would not need to worry about the code page, and finally, in this section, you can choose to set a two factor authentication on this list. The reason you would do this is to further protect the passwords if they are especially sensitive. So, in the event that someone walked past your computer and you left it unlocked, and you had password stay open on your screen, they would still need to pass this two-factor authentication to gain access to that one list. Next we have a bunch of settings which controls how the password list behaves, and once again any of these settings can be changed at any time. Over to the right you can automate which settings are applied to the list by basing them off of an existing password list or a password list template. Now being a shared password list, we mentioned earlier that it's possible to grant access for other users to it. In this section here, you can automatically apply permissions based off a password list template or an existing password list, and this just helps set the password list up quicker. Finally, we have a password reset schedule, which could be configured to suit your needs. For normal everyday users, this option would not be needed, but if you had an expiry date on your passwords, then enabling this option will generate a new password for you, based off the password generator policy you chose, and then it will recalculate a new expiry date. Now one of the most important screens is the customised field screens, and this can be broken down into two sections. In the top section we have a number of standard fields which are most commonly used for all users, things like a title, username, and of course a password. You can disable and enable these fields as you deem appropriate, and for example you may want to add in a URL field and remove the expiry date field. Next you have the option to create your own custom fields if none of our standard ones are applicable to you. Let's take a look at creating two new fields. In generic field 1, I'll change the title to email address and tick this box to make it active. As an email address is just a line of text, we'll leave the field type as a text field. In generic field 2, let's say we want to store credit card PIN numbers. I'll change the title to PIN, tick the enabled field, and then choose password as the field type. Choosing the password field type ensures that anything stored in this field is encrypted directly in the database. Some other options on this screen are to make the field mandatory to fill out, otherwise users will not be able to save the record. You can also choose to encrypt the data directly in the password state database to further secure your records. You should choose this option if the data is sensitive. Next we'll move on to the guide, and if you have specific instructions on how this password list should be used, you can note them down in here. Finally, the API tab is generally not used for the standard user, but if you wanted to write custom scripts to add, modify and delete passwords out of the list, you would set an API key under here along with any other settings. Now if we click save, the screen will refresh and we can now access our newly created password list. You can see that it's currently empty and as we start using this list, some auditing data will start building up in this section. This just tracks any time a user accesses a password or changes it etc. 
You can tell this is a shared password list from this label in the top right corner and also if you set a guide it can be accessed from here. As mentioned earlier you can change settings on your password list at any time and this can be achieved from the edit password list option on the list administration menu. On this menu you also have a number of other tools at your disposal including applying permissions to the password list, a recycle bin for any deleted passwords or possibly you might want to run some reports about this list. I'll quickly create a password now and we do this by hitting the add button. Now you can see what fields we can enter data in including the new ones I added called URL, email and pin. Please refer to our other video called adding passwords for some detailed information on adding and saving a password. I hope this helps you understand what password lists are and we appreciate you taking the time to watch this video.